Researchers are racing to figure out the causes of obesity, trying to curb an epidemic of growing waistlines. We've learned a lot in the past 40 years about obesity. It turns out it might just have as much to do with our brain as our gut. First, a bit how our brain and body work. Despite our iPhones, airplanes, and hot running water, humans have actually evolved very little as a species in the past few thousand years. Our bodies are wired just like they were in our prehistoric ancestors with one simple mission, don't starve. The human body is so devoted to fending off starvation that the mechanisms we've developed may actually be hurting us in an age where we don't really have to worry about catching our food. In fact, many of us have access to lots of foods, and it's the delicious high calorie foods with lots of fat and sugar that can cause major problems. Neuroscientists have learned that fatty, sugary foods tap into the brain's pleasure centers, the same areas that are associated with heroin and cocaine habits. That's right. Sugary and fatty foods can be addictive, just like hard drugs. Research has shown that after extended periods of excessive eating, brain connections are permanently altered on a molecular level, making it harder to knock out obesity. Controlling body weight is a complicated process that's influenced by your genes, but it's not just genetic and it's regulated by your brain. How do we know this? Mice. In the 1970s, researchers hypothesized that a chemical in the blood that travels to the brain triggered feelings of being hungry or full. So they studied mice that were naturally obese because of a rare genetic mutation. When the pleasantly plump mice were given blood from mice without the mutation, they suddenly started eating less and losing weight. Researchers figured the obese mice were missing a chemical that made them feel full. Fast forward 20 years. Researchers isolated the mutated gene that caused obesity in the mice. They were then able to identify a protein called leptin. Leptin is made in fat cells and triggers the feeling of satiety, or being full. In other words, more leptin means a decreased appetite. Miracle weight loss treatment, right? Not so much. It helped cure obesity in the genetically mutated mice because their bodies couldn't produce any functioning leptin. It also worked in children who had a very similar, very rare genetic mutation. Obese people who don't have this mutation actually have higher levels of leptin. This is because the body pumps out leptin to try to decrease appetite as weight increases. But the body develops a tolerance to this, so the leptin release becomes less and less effective. Obesity remains a very hot topic in scientific research, but there's still no one cure-all. The leptin discovery, however, had a major impact. It led scientists to discover a whole cocktail of chemicals in the body that regulate appetite, weight gain, weight loss. Some, like orexin, are made in a region of the brain called the hypothalamus. Others, like ghrelin and peptide tyrosine tyrosine, hang out in your gut. All of these chemicals come together to affect your appetite. Genetics can also play a role. Mutations in your genes can cause changes to this cocktail of chemicals, which can affect your weight. But these mutations are rare, and your genes will have a much bigger role in determining your body type rather than how much you eat. Treating obesity requires a comprehensive approach. It's best to talk with your doctor to learn more about these issues if you or a loved one is seeking help. Your brain will thank you.